Jeremiah chapter 15, verses 15. This was prophet Jeremiah having agonies of in life, going through a lot in life, and he felt like God had forgotten him, like nothing seems to be making sense. As we read, O Lord, thou knowest, remember me and visit me, and revenge me of my persecutors. Take me not away in thy long suffering, know that for thy sake I have suffered rebuke. Let's continue to 16. Thy words were formed, and I did eat them, and their word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. For I am called by thy name, O Lord, God of hosts. 17. I sat not in the assembly of mockers, nor rejoiced. I sat alone because of thy hand, for thou hast filled me with indignation. Verses 18. Why is my pain perpetual and my wound incurable? which refuses to be healed, will thou be altogether unto me as a liar and as waters that fail? Verses 19. And God responded, Therefore thus the Lord said, Therefore thus saith the Lord. In NIV, in New Living Translation says, Then the Lord did what? Responded. This is how the Lord responds. If you return to me, I will restore you. You can continue to serve me if you speak good words rather than worthless words. You will be my spokesman. You must influence them. Do not let them influence you. Do not let your words influence you. Do not let those worthless words influence you. Praise the Lord. Yeah, so... We discussed about this prophet Jeremiah going through agonies in life and he's questioning God that why is my pain not getting off? He said, to the extent he told God that I've not even sat in the council of mockers, of scorners, of people who blaspheme you, but I've, made, I've been careful to obey your words. But and yet I see my pain not ending. I see things are worsening. The agony of a righteous man. We say it if in our generation now, such a man is going through agony, we would judge that man that he has sinned before the Lord. We would call him that he has fallen short of God's glory. Because we are seeing him going all these tribulations. We would start judging and concluding on his matter. But and yet his narrative is different. His narrative with God is different. Even told God, I am tired. This is too much. Brothers and sisters, we must understand that before Jeremiah is talking about that in Jeremiah 15, God told him in Jeremiah 1.5 that I know you before you were born. I know you by name. I have chosen you. But when God spoke that as assurance and that promise, it doesn't mean that when God has given you assurance, life will not be hard. It doesn't mean that when God has given you a promise, things will not be bad. So we see from Jeremiah 1, 5, God really promised him, I'm going to be with you. I know you before you were born. I saw you in your mother's womb. Da, 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 all those things. We see here in 15, Jeremiah complaining. And yet God had assured him, I'll be with you. I know you. In other words, God already knew that he was going to pass through all these challenges, all these agonies, all this pain. God knew and God allowed it. Praise the Lord. When, when we see now Jeremiah 29, 11, the most famous scripture that we know. What does that scripture say? I know the plans I have for you. 
For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Their plans are good and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. God is now saying this because of what Jeremiah has been lamenting about. Amen? So, the agonies of a righteous man happens to anybody. Anyone. Whether you are spirit filled. There comes a time in life where you feel God is far. Actually, King David come and says, he made a statement. Is it Psalms, um, Psalms 6? King David, Psalms chapter 2, verse 6, verses 2. King David comes and says, one day he said, I almost wandered off. I almost left the presence. Have compassion on me, Lord, for I, I am weak. Heal me, Lord, for my bones are in agony. My bones are in agony. Mm -hmm. It's okay. We are not moving there, huh? I am sick at heart. How long, O oh Lord, until you restore me? Now, when you read down, 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 we're not going to read down. We're not going to go there. King David is here saying, now we sh I see the wicked prospering. I see those, those scorn corners prospering. Can we sit together? Can we sit? This thing of walking around distracts me. Eh? It distracts the preacher. Let's sit. Eh? I see the scorners. I see people. I see the wicked. People are prospering. But... But run for me, who have kept your altar, have kept your fire. Why are things not happening? And yet the Bible says that King David is a man after God's own heart. Why should a man after God's own heart feel like God has moved away from him? Because agonies happen to anybody. Anybody. Even though you pray and you, you keep, you, even though I don't know what type of prayer you make. At one point in time, at one point in time, you will have a questioning mind. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Even our Lord Jesus, we see him saying, My father, my father, why have thou forsaken me? Why have I forsaken me? Because at that point, the agonies of life had come to him. And his father was looking astray now, looking the other side. Because where there is sin, God is not there. Praise the Lord. The sin of man... To come. The sin of man at that time. And the sin of man before. Was all on Jesus. And the agony was so strong. Even the Lord Jesus. Passed through the agonies of life. He passed through the agonies of life. Agonies of life happens to anybody. If in our generation now. We see a man of God going through tribulation. That's when you start seeing people now putting on WhatsApp statuses. Oh, some people think they know God so much. Oh, some people think they are better than others. Oh, some people think now they put those short, short clips. Oh, what is now happening now? See, where is he now? See, where is she now? See, not knowing that that man or woman of God or that person is just going through a phase that God purposed it. That God purposed it. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, the scripture that we know very well, the story that we know very well, God had the ability and the mandate to stop that from happening to these Hebrew boys. God had it. He had it. But the Hebrew boys came and told the king Nebuchadnezzar and said, we know that we shall not bow down to these. And even though our God, listen, even though our God does not rescue us, we want you to know this we shall not bow. Because they understood that God may come, he may not come. But we don't want to be in a place where we think God is not there. Whether he comes, whether he doesn't come, I am for God. Whether it rains, whether it doesn't rain, I am for God. Whether he has given me money or not, I am for God. Whether he promised to give me a wife and he has taken years and years, I remain a child of God. Nothing changes. Amen? That is what we, we ministered last Sunday. And we said, I'm just bringing so that we, have, we understand. We said, for us to understand what to do when the agonies of life have come, number one, don't fear. Tell your neighbor, don't fear. Secondly, we said, learn to pray. Learn to do what? 
The third one, keep your joy. When agonies of life have come, learn to keep your joy flourishing. Don't let your joy go away from you. Praise the Lord. Now, under the agonies of life of a righteous man, I'm going to have a subtopic of this because it's in line with what we were sharing last Sunday. And the same scriptures, same revelation. It says, the heading is, what to do when life gets worse. You remember, at a point in time, life is okay. Now, after you are serving, you have done all diligent righteousness, life gets worse. What should you do? As a child of God, listen to this teaching. What should you do as a believer? Hallelujah. Let's open Psalms 130 verse 1. We first hear this what King David was saying again. Psalms chapter 130 verses 1. King David said some things there. Then we, we first hear his agonies and his lamentations. From the depths of despair, O oh Lord, I call for your help. King David now is in a place where he needs help. Life is getting worse. Uh huh. Hear my cry, O oh Lord. Pay attention to my prayer. Uh huh. Continue. Lord, if you kept a record of my sins, if you kept a record of my sins, who, O oh Lord, could ever survive? Who could ever survive? Okay, this is the New Living Translation. Okay, let's continue with it. But you offer forgiveness that we might learn to fear you. Mm -hmm. I am counting on the Lord. Yes, I am counting on him. I have put my hope in his word. I long for the Lord more than centuries long for the dawn. Yes, more than... Okay, let's... More than centuries long for the dawn. Continue. O oh Israel, hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is unfailing love. His redemption over flaws. His redemption over flaws. Amen. Amen. All right. Go to Psalms chapter 10, verses 1. Hear what King David is again saying here. King David said, chapter 10, verses 1, it says, My Lord, do you stand far off? Why do you hide yourself in times of trouble? This is a questioning mind. This is a man whom the Bible calls a man after God's own heart. Saying, Lord, why do you hide yourself when I need you? When I need you the most, why do you be silent? When I need you to act quickly, why are you far away? When I need you to respond to this matter, why are you not talking? When I need you to come and rescue me out of it, why are you silent? The agony of a righteous man. A man is going under this tribulation. Now, it doesn't show that God is far away from this man. God is near to this man. God has already predestined your life. And he's trying to show King David that no, I want you to first go through a precept. I want you to first go through a certain journey. So that when you reach over there, you will know that I, the Lord, brought you from this far. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Are we getting this? Are we getting this? The Bible says, the Lord is our present help in times of trouble. But we, King David is here still questioning. Why are you far in trouble? Why don't you rescue me when I have cancer? Why don't you come and rescue me when the doctors have diagnosed me with a serious and terrible disease, why don't you, why are you allowing this to come? 
I don't have school fees. Why are you allowing this to happen? I have prayed to believe you for a job. But I don't get any testimony. Why are you allowing this to happen? My wife has left me. My husband has left me. I don't have money. Why are you allowing this to happen? I have a lot of debts. Everybody wants to arrest me. Why are you allowing this to happen? Brothers and sisters, I have another answer for you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Am I talking to somebody? Come on, let me see people who, who have gone through some hard times in life. Okay, for those of you who have not gone through hard times in life, may God, may God make you never go through it. But some of us who have gone through a life where you feel God, are you there? Are you there? But I pray constantly. I diligently give my seed. I give my offerings. I give my tithe. But are you there? I don't see answers. I don't see answers. I don't see answers. King Solomon came and answered us, gave us another answer. In Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verses 11. He said, All things, open Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verses 11. Listen now to what King Solomon is here saying. He has made everything beautiful in his he has also kept eternity in the hearts of men, yet they cannot fathom what God has done from beginning to the end. The God you serve is the God of the beginning to the end. That means in the middle, he is still the God. He said, I have started this good work in you, and I will bring it to accomplishment. Whatever God started, any promises that the Lord has given you, brothers and sisters, it shall surely come to pass. It doesn't matter what tribulations you're going through. It doesn't matter whether the landlord has chased you away from the house. It doesn't matter whether your loved ones, nobody want to be with you. But Paul says, count it all joy. Count it all joy. When tribulations, when there is problems, when there is persecutions on your way, because you have believed God and God has recognized you, you are a child of destiny. Don't give up. When their life becomes hard. Oh, some of you now you're looking at me and say, Oh, pastor, what are you saying? What are you saying? I feel like getting away. You don't understand what I'm going through. I'm also telling you, you don't understand the God in you. I have believed God for years. I have done this. I have done this. Oh, even when I come to church, sister so and so, who even comes very late to church, who even never gives? Who even nothing? I don't, I am even much better than her. But she's getting married. She's getting a job. She's getting this. But me, very good looking, very okay, very fashionable. Why is this not happening? I have an answer for you. King Solomon said, God makes everything beautiful in his own time. It's just a matter of time, my brother, my sister. Surely God shall answer you when your time comes. God will answer you when your time comes. God will answer you when your time comes. Hallelujah. It's just a matter of time. Lay hold on to eternal life. Lay hold on to this thing. Remain steadfast unto this thing. Don't give up. Paul told Timothy, be a good soldier of the Lord. Be a good soldier of the Lord. Hallelujah. Do not give up. Be a good soldier. Why is he even saying that fight a good fight? A good fight is a fight of men who don't give up. That's a good fight. A good fight is a fight of people who have understood their God. That whether God rescues me or not, I cannot give up. Whether I have received my answers or not, I am continuing to serve him. Whether things are fine, things are not okay. I am coming diligently in the presence of God. I refuse to give up. Some of us, it's just, just a friend. When a friend tells you something off your head. That's when you say, I can't be in church. When the boss tells you something not nice, 
Because for you, you wake up, you want everything nice. Every, everything, people should speak well to you. People should love you. Uh, people, some of you, even though they love you like what, you still complain. Even though they show you too much love, you still complain. Oh, I'm leaving church. Oh, let me leave. Yes. <laughs> fight a good fight. That's why in my devotion today, I say, don't wait for people to approve you. Don't wait for people to say you are good. Let it be inside of you. Speak to yourself. Because this is what God has told you about. Man will not tell you that which you want to hear. Amen? Man will tell you that which actually will just hurt you. Today man is celebrating you. Tomorrow man will leave you. <laughs> and that is how man is. If Peter could do it with Jesus. How about this friend of yours who just got from Aguishiri? If Peter could do that to Jesus. Peter. Who was with Jesus? Who one day became an armor bearer, moving with a knife, saying, we shall protect you, master. No one will touch you when I'm there. That's how man is. Today they're celebrating you in the evening. Bah, they have turned their back. So, whom should you put your trust in? As the Bible says that whose report shall you believe? Believe in the reports of God. Believe in the reports of God. Hallelujah. Am I talking to somebody? Is there somebody feeling like giving up in life? Don't give up. That business of yours, don't give up. Even if the business becomes worse, you also worsen. When the relationship has become more bitter, uh -uh, don't start speaking bitter words. You saw how God responded to Jeremiah. He said now, and God responds. He said, I know I will deliver you. I'll bless you. I'll make you defeat your enemies. Only if I hear you stop speaking those worthless words. Jeremiah 15, 19. God doesn't want you to speak worthless words even though things are hard. Even though things are not working, God doesn't want you to speak worthless words. Hallelujah. Let me go very fast. Let me go very fast. The Lord placed upon my heart three instructions. Somebody say instructions. They could be more, they could be less, but this is upon me. This is what the Lord has placed upon me. Three instructions. What to do when you feel life is worsening. And when you listen to this, it's going to help you. Amen? Okay, some of you have never been in a worse life. Some of you... From nursery, they carried you in a nice car, in a SC to school. From nursery to say primary, you went to an international school speaking good English. From some of you even from primary, you don't know what is beans, eating beans and posho. From primary, secondary, you went to good schools. From secondary, you went to international university. International university. Now after international university, you got a job. You got married. And life is okay. But what about this one? Who even used to study on remote? Today you are in class. They chase you. Your father didn't pay fees. To the extent you even fear seeing the headmaster. Because when you see the headmaster, you think he's going to ask for fees. You wait for your, your friends to study. Then you read their books. I did that. You wait for people to first be okay. Then you read their books. Life, the agony, can't be hard. People go through things. People go through things. People go through things. All right. Three instructions God placed upon my heart. They could be more, they could be less, they could, according to the revelation you have. Number one, when you see agonies in life, 
Number one, understand the love of God. Someone say, understand the love of God. Once you know that God loves you, even in that agony, even in when the life is very hard, understand the love of God. Let's go to Jeremiah, who was complaining. Now in 31 verses 3, the Lord appeared to him. Let's see what God said to Jeremiah. Jeremiah 33 verse 1. I mean 31 verses 1. Verses 3. The Lord appeared to us in the past saying, I have loved you. This is the love of what? God is now comforting Jeremiah. That I know you are speaking all these things. You are going all these agonies, persecutions, blah, blah, blah. But I want you to know my love for you. I have loved you with an everlasting love. I have drawn you with a loving kindness. Once you understand the love of God upon your life, you will literally know that even though I'm going through this challenge, even though I'm going through this hard time, God loves me. He loves me. Researchers found out that 95% of suicidal death, people who commit suicide, is out of lack of love. When somebody feels nobody loves them, when somebody feels no one loves you, everyone is against you, everyone is against no one loves you, you feel like life cannot give me anything better. You feel like there is no future. Then you say, let me commit suicide. But may you understand that God loves you. The Bible said, God is loved. He loved us before we loved him. You didn't love him. You didn't love him. But he loved you. He loved you. So you should know that even in that hard time, hard moment, even in those hard moments, those hard, hard times, understand that God is with me and he has not left me. Praise the Lord. Romans chapter 8 verses 35. I want to go very slow so we understand this thing. Romans, the one we even read, we even read, I think, last Sunday. Romans chapter 8, verses 35. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble, or hardship, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword? Who? No one. Continue. As it is written, for your sake, we face death. For the sake of God, we face death. All day long, we are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. This is what Paul is telling Romans. Because of the sake of God, people don't want to be your friend. Because of the sake of God, people are persecuting you. You are now being looked as sheep to be killed. Because you are preaching Jesus. Because somebody knows you are born again. People, somebody knows you are a church girl. Somebody knows you are a church boy. Now nobody wants you to be their friend. I want to make you, give you an assurance that nothing can separate you from the love of God. Whether they love you or they don't love you, nothing will separate you from the love of God. You have four million, four billion people in the face of the earth to love you. That's why I feel pity for people who cry. Oh, so and so has left me. If somebody doesn't agree with you, don't mind. Why are you reconciled? Some of you, you reconcile with everyone on earth. Everyone reconciles with you. There's a problem. There's a problem. Some people should not reconcile with you. It's okay. Amen? If he doesn't want to be your friend, there are 4 billion people in the face of the earth to be your friend. Because nobody can separate you from the love of God. If he left you, God will bring a better man. If she left you, God will bring a better wife. If they chucked you from a job, God will give you a better job. Hallelujah. If they stole your money, God will give you better money. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. Nobody can separate you from the love of God. So understand the love of God. Praise the Lord. We are going very fast. We are going very fast. Ephesians chapter 2 verses 4. Still talking about the love. There are very many scriptures about the love of God. The Bible says, But God being rich in mercy because of great love 
with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses. You see the scripture. But because of this great love for us, God, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ. Even when we were dead in, first give me the amplified. When we were dead in transgressions, when you were dead in sin, you are soaked in sin. God still loves you. So, forget these people who tell you, oh, I don't have the love of God. You are a sinner. God doesn't love you. No, God loves you. Even in your sin. You, because there is no righteousness that you can ever make to be right that God will love you. <laughs> it's only Jesus who did that. He gave Jesus. When we read, in Amplified said, even when we were dead, slain by our own shortcomings and trespasses, he made us alive in fellowship and in union with Christ. He gave us, he gave us the very life of Christ himself. The same new life which he quickened him. For it is by grace, his favor and mercy, which he did not deserve. This is not Romans. I said Ephesians or Romans. Ephesians 2, 4, right? Yes, it's okay. It's coming. It's coming there. For it's by grace is favor and mercy which you did not deserve. You, you did not deserve it. You did not deserve it. There's nothing you can do to deserve it. That you are saved, delivered from judgment, and made partaker of, uh -huh, that's what I was, made partakers of Christ's salvation. You became a partaker of Jesus' salvation. Whatever he did, Jesus died so that you can, so that he can show you love. So that you can partake of his grace. So that you can partake of his achievement. So that you can partake of his victory. Praise the Lord. Someone said the love of God is my portion. Hallelujah. Very many scriptures. We see 1 John 3, 1. You read it at home. 1 John 4, 16. You read it at home. 1 John 4, 4, 19. We, you read it at home. Jeremiah 31, 3, we have read it. Now, second one, let's go. For you to understand the instructions, understand these three instructions when there is agony, when life is hard, so you don't give up. Number two is have faith in your God. Have faith in what? Understand that your God is alive and believe in him. The Bible says, what is faith? Hebrews 11, 1, it says, now faith is assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. For by it the people all received their commandment. By faith we understand that the universe was created by the word of God. So that what is seen was not made out of things that are visible. That are visible. So, second one, instruction is, when life is hard, life is getting worse. You're coming from this challenge to the next challenge. You're coming from this problem to the next problem. You're coming from this agony to the next agony. You're coming from this sickness to the next sickness. You're coming from this. These are pro things are continuing constantly. Understand and have faith in God. Simple. Just have your faith in God. Mark chapter 11 verse 22. The Bible says, have faith in God. God, Jesus answered, truly I tell you, if anyone says to this mountain, go through yourself into the sea, does not doubt in their heart, but believes that what they say will happen, it will be done to you. Just believe it that you shall come out of this problem. Just believe it that God is going to rescue you. Just believe it that life is going to change. Just believe that this is just a phase in life. Just believe that this is not the end of me. Just believe that Tomorrow is better than yesterday. Just believe that the worst has already happened. God has better things ahead of me. Just believe it and continue talking about it. Be expectant. The Bible says, do not make your expectation be cut off. Don't make it cut off. If you believe that you're going to be a big businessman, continue believing that you shall be a billionaire. If you believe that you're going to get married next year, continue believing. Do not give up. If you're believing God for your children, continue believing. Do not give up. If you're believing God to heal you, continue with that belief. Don't give up. Am I talking to somebody? 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7, the Bible says, For we live by faith, not by sight. And without faith, it is impossible. 
to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those that honestly seek him. Those that come up to him must believe that he exists. He exists. Amen? So believe God by faith. You have not seen him. You have not yet seen things happening. You have not yet seen life. You, 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 you actually, actually, you should come from the hand of your things, of your life. You should continuously speak how you're going to end. You keep saying to yourself that I know I'm not going to die like this, but I know I will end well. I know I come from a poor family. I come from a poor background, but I will end well. I know the doctors have given me days to live on earth, but I know my tomorrow, I will not be like this. I know that I'm getting a better job. I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to give up looking for a job. I'm not going to give up applying for a job because sooner than later, I'm getting a better job. Clap your hands to Jesus. Hallelujah. The last scripture from that, faith in God. Having faith in God, the last scripture from that. Romans 10, 17 says, So faith comes from hearing. This is what I want us to hear now the last time. Hearing and hearing from the word of God. If you want to build faith in your heart, when challenges have come, you need to constantly hear the word of God. Read the word of God. Be a reader of the word. Listen to sermons. Listen to messages. When things are hard, listen. Because as you continue to hear in the word of God, as you continue to, to read them, faith is being inbuilt inside of you. Faith is being inbuilt. Because the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing. Comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. The more you hear the word of God, the more your faith is inbuilt in you. Praise the Lord. Yesterday, Pastor Ronnie was here with Pastor Ronnie. He told me, he told me, Pastor Agri, one of the things I know about you, you are a man of faith. When we was building this thing, starting this thing, Pastor Ronnie came, <laughs> as I thought he was here. He came, we, we stood there with him. We had just put this thing, with, nothing was here. The ground was looking like this, everything was not okay. The place was looking a very bad place. This was a very bad place. And I remember telling, and Pastor Ronnie told me, <coughs> he stood there and he said, ah, Pastor Agri, will this place ever be a good, uh, you need a lot of money to make this place come. I remember telling him, I said, Pastor Ronnie, we don't have the money, but all I know is I have the faith that it will be okay. That's the only thing I told him. The place needed a lot of money, a lot of money. Yesterday when he came, he stood behind and told me, ah, Pastor Agri, one thing I've lived with you, I know. You're a man of faith. Man of faith. I have come to a place where I believe God for everything. I believe God for anything. I remember in December when we were seated there, I remember doctors came and he got me seated there. I was so disillusioned. Actually, I called her, I said, doctors, I needed somebody to talk to me. I just needed somebody to I told her, I said, doctors, come and talk to me. I was so disillusioned, I sat there. This place was so bushy. When I calculate the money needed for this place, I see money coming nowhere. But then I kept on telling God, I said, God, if you have called us in this, if you called me, you bring the money. Amen. A lot of people said a lot of words. People are talking. You know that people who can talk, talk and make you feel like, ah, you're doing nothing. I could meditate on myself and I speak to myself. When we were shifting from gigs. That day, I told people in church, we are going to our better place. We are going to a better place. Hey, the place is okay. The place is okay. And we made sure, me and some few people, those of Desmond Isaac, we made sure that the ladies don't come with us. So that we first carry the things as the men. Those were like, ah, ladies have a very, their hearts can easily break. But we came, we carried things from gigis, carried things, also things in the car, things. This place was bad. We carried our thing, we just put them there. And we all sat looking at each other. <laughs> Everyone is questioning, Papa, what is next? Papa, Papa, <laughs> Papa. What are we doing, Papa, what is next? I'm also there confused. <laughs> but you told people in church, oh, we are going to a better place. Oh, and the church was excited. Immediately, 
We saw those of mommy, Allen also coming, Bella coming. Then Isaac said, hey, but we didn't want these people to come. These people, their hearts will break. <laughs> so things of salvation is about faith. Amen. Believe God to the last dot. Believe God to, the, to your last breath. Believe him. Even when you're about to die, like T.L.S. Born said, I cannot die of this disease. I will first rise up, then I will die another day. This disease will not kill me. So you refuse for that disease to kill you. And you say, I will, not, I will first get healed, then I die. You refuse it by faith. Amen. Time is going, time is going. Clap your hands to Jesus. The third one, which is the last one. Keep your hope alive. Tell your neighbor, keep your hope alive. Isaiah 40 verses 30, the Bible says, Even youth grow tired and weary, but young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not go weary. They will walk and not faint. Keep your hope alive. Keep your hope alive. Don't make your hope die. Amen? If they have told you negative words, if they have told you very hard things, keep your hope alive. That I am not what they say that I am. I am not what the public calls me. I am not what they conclude about my life. My hope is a life in God. Romans 8.24, the Bible says, For in this hope we were saved. But hope that is seen is not hope at all. Who hopes for what they already have? Hope, is, hope that is seen is not hope. Hope means you are hoping for something that you have not yet have, had it. You are hoping to be something you have not yet seen. In other words, we believe to see, not see to believe. As Christianity, we need to believe to see the goodness of God. We need to believe to see the manifestation of God. We need to believe to see the hand of God, not see to believe. That is not hope. You want to first see it, then you believe it. That is not hope. May you first believe it, and then you'll see the goodness of God. Clap your hands and appreciate God. The last scripture, the last scripture as we rise up. Let's rise up on our feet. Rise up on our feet. The last scripture. Bible says, Romans 10, 30, 10, 32 says, Let us hold fast the confession of our faith, of our hope, without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. God is faithful to do exceedingly abundantly above that which you can ever believe or think. Lift your hands and pray to Jesus. Father, we thank you. We give you praise. We glorify your name. Lord, we thank you.